Welcome to the Red Booth. Today we have Mike Shupan, music producer and engineer. Howdy. So thanks for coming on the show. Of course. Yeah, I've been really excited to have you because I know that you have worked with all kinds of amazing bands. Mm -hmm. And um, you do, you, you work like as the engineer in the studio as well. Mm -hmm. And then why don't, yeah. you, why don't you tell us a bit about it? I, yeah, I've, I've been super lucky to get you know involved with a lot of really cool groups. Um, and my primarily my primary role is uh, an engineer, but I'm also, uh, you know, getting into producing. Uh, I work with Justin Melville Johnson quite a bit. You Very know, cool. Um, I go on tour as his bass tech. Uh, okay. Usually, that's where I, you know, got involved with Nine Inch Nails for a couple of years as as his bass tech, which was just <laughs> that's a phenomenal um, experience. I can't, I can't tell you that that's kind of like um, <clears throat> I was. I had Nine Inch Nails <laughs> when I was growing up. Uh, it was one of my favorite bands, and and I had like almost all their albums in the right. 90s, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it was it was definitely a, a huge experience and a catalyst to me getting into producing. I never actually really saw myself as a producer until I went on the road with them and, and saw how they did it. Trent, yeah. you know, as his own music director and works with everybody and how he takes a song and is like, okay, this is how I recorded it, but I want to do it differently live. And I was like, this is amazing. He's, you know not only his own producer, but he's now producing, you know, his live show. And he's just freaking brilliant at it. He is amazing. I mean, did, I remember when he, when Nine Inch Nails first, like, sort of, like, blew up. It was so unique and no, no one was doing anything like that that I remember. Right. Why don't you explain, like, what a music producer is and what a en music engineer is? What's the difference? Well, as an uh, engineer, um, primarily, you know, primary goal is to just record the music so you know I'm, I'm responsible for not only just running the you know computer but you have to you know choose the sounds you know you work with the producer and, and kind of choose the tones and the sounds you know and work with the band and stuff and really choose the sounds like so so how would you so, modify so like that. it's kind of my job is really to listen to what the band and the producer wants so, you know, if they're trying to convey, like, they want this, you know, dark emotion kind of going on, I have to be able to understand what they want and duplicate a, a tone, you know, through, you know, with guitar amps or, or whatever, you know, synthesizers or piano that they're using and stuff like that. And, you know, that's what, you know, really shapes songs to a degree from you know, the engineering standpoint and making sure that... So you pick, do you pick settings of, like, like on a guitar amp, let's say, for example... Like do you? Are they do they usually? Yeah, they, I mean the 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 band's kind of a group effort. Sometimes it, yeah. it really kind of depends on the artist. You yeah. Know, you know, some guys just go in, they have a clear understanding of what they want, and yeah. sometimes they have absolutely no idea what they want, and there's you know you have to just do it for them. You know, there's there's kind of a fine line of of where an engineer and producer sit. Sometimes sometimes they're doing the, you know the same thing. You know, textbook definition of of what they're doing they're kind of doing the same actual thing. functionality of or a lot of times the producer will jump in and and you know edit things and do stuff and you know it's just kind of a, a big flip-flop of stuff but um, have you ever worked with those giant million dollar massive mixing boards <laughs> yeah i just mixed a record at capital c uh, okay. for this group frip cool and we wanted to use the big analog console they've got a big neve vr and it's like 72 channels it's massive it's oh my huge God. It's, it's amazing and so we had it in our mind that let's do something crazy. Let's mix 12 songs in two days and let's just commit. Let's not nitpick. Let's not just, you know, because you can spend hours and days mixing tweaking a song and tweaking and, and just, just totally it. getting into it and be yeah. like, oh, it's not quite perfect. We're like, screw it. Yeah. We're going to commit. Yeah. So we went in and, you know, put it all out on the console and, and kind of did our thing and just pull their hair out for two days and mix 12 songs, which was insane. And it came out really, really well. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you guys have an album coming out, right? With Fur Frith? Yeah. Okay. So they just finished the video for it. And yeah, it's going to be really great. I'm, I'm really proud of that project. That's it fantastic. Really well. Cool. And did you, were you, you are a producer on that one too? <clears throat> Not, no, I was mostly engineer. Okay. You know, I dabbled probably a little in producing stuff you know it's just yeah. a collaboration so um yeah you know we've worked on it for quite a while you know i played guitar on it and uh some synth stuff and yeah you know it's just a creation of, of music cool mm -hmm. 
Well, so you've worked with a lot of bands. I thought yeah. it would be cool to mention some of them. Um, do you want to talk about your resume, I guess you could sure, say? Sure, like, yeah. I mean, um, working with Justin, Justin um, has become such an amazing producer where, honestly, that's, that's really where I get a lot of my production talent from is just observing him over the years and that wow. he's just he's far beyond like anything that I've ever really gotten to experience before you know he's just he's so meticulous and and caring for for songs and you know, I like to think that I've kind of developed some of those attributes that, that he has but um, working with Justin what was the first project you did with him I was uh, m83 we did uh, oh. Hurry Up, We're Dreaming. Oh, cool. And um, that was uh, that was a really fun project. That... How did he, like, find you? Let's see. I think I found... How do we know? I think um, Stuart Cole introduced us. Okay. Uh, just a mutual friend, and we started, you know, hanging out. I came to L.A. and, you know, started doing, like, some, some minor engineering for him. And then, you know, I'm looking for work, so I started doing, like, other just odd jobs, you know, fixing up the studio and stuff and then just kind of casually kept doing progressed from there yeah just That's great. kept doing more work all right and now for a quick commercial break all motorcycle lovers out there glenda harley davidson is where dreams and machines come together with the best stock of harleys in los angeles glendale harley davidson is a 21st century harley dealer with a deep sense of history and culture from our vintage motorcycle museum and amazing staff to our new model lineup, come be a part of American history. Check us out at glendaleharley.com for the latest events and specials. Glendale Harley, home of the love ride, the largest one day motorcycle charity event in the world. And welcome back to the show. I wanted to ask you, what is that like being on tour with Nine Inch Nails, like from your perspective? Like what's a, a typical day on tour with Nine Inch Nails? Okay, so a typical day, I'd say we just did, um back-to-back -back shows so we'd roll in we're pretty shredded from the night before um, like how late do you think you were up because you have to break down right that's yeah is that part of what you did yeah we have to okay. break down um, I don't know I guess it's not too late maybe we'd get to bed by like one or two in the morning something oh, okay. like that then we got to be up at you know eight or ten depending on where we were we, you know we just traveled from you know in a giant bus yeah in a bus from one city to the next city um, <clears throat> does so, all the equipment fit in the bus too no, there with nails we had seven semi trailers. Holy crap! Yeah. that is a lot. We had seven semi trailers and five tour buses, and uh, it was it was a really big production. It was amazing. So you brought the entire stage, basically. Um, I mean, like like all of the, all of the all yeah, of the I think, speakers. Yeah, and everything all of the... but the stage. I think the stage was always provided by the venue. That's great. Yeah. But uh, everything else, all the lights, PA system, you know, all the band gear and stuff like that. So, you know, we'd, we'd go into an arena and then... Um, Did you have a lot of, like, backdrop stuff and, like, like oh, yeah. technical... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had one of the most intricate lighting systems. Uh, this was the, the Lights in the Sky tour. Wow. And uh, it was, you know, he had this video wall that dropped down, you know, strobe lights, LED bars, like, the, the works. It was... It was very, very amazing. That sounds really impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'd, we would um, we'd show up and, you know, while stuff is getting built, I would uh, put new strings on all of Justin's basses and some of his guitars because he played guitar during that as well. You know, clean everything off, you know, make it look really nice. Uh, set up all of his equipment and then, you know, make sure everything is working good, dial in the tones that, you know, need to be there, you know, check all his pedals. And then uh, we'd you know, have a sound check uh, where they typically, you know, do, you know, a few songs. And then um, if any adjustments need to be done, then we do that. And then we'd have a few hours to kill before the show time. And then um, we do the show. And then it was just, you know, two hours of just raging. It was awesome. <laughs> and were you, were you like watching the show from behind the set or behind the stage? Well, um, Justin had, uh, different basses that he'd play for, you know, almost every song. So I would, you know, I'd be right by the stage, and so at the end of every song, I would hand him a new guitar, you know, and uh, so I did that, so I had to stay, you know. And then he would, like, smash the other one? 
Noticed yeah, that. he did one. <laughs> he did? Yeah, he did. It was amazing. He, he smashed his guitar up real good, and then, you know, the next day I had to fix it so I could do it all over again. Did you super glue it back together? How does that work? <laughs> yeah, um, just with the glue and clamps. And, nice. You know, it never really played right after that, but it was, uh, it was pretty imagine. cool. Yeah. Wow, you actually did that. That's really funny. Yeah. I was just joking, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I, I, I had help. I was like, uh, I don't... Are we going to glue this thing back together? And one of the guys helped me put it back together. How funny. So, yeah, so now I know how to glue a guitar back together. Good. That's very important to know, especially if you're with a hard rock or any, you know, any of those right. types of yeah. genre, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Haven't needed the skill sense, but, you know. Oh, okay. Sure. Sometimes it'll come, That's good. come up. So, so how long uh, was the tour that you were on? I think actual touring was... 14 months, I think. It was, uh, I think it was technically three tours, because it was Lights in the Sky, it was the Jane's Addiction, Nine Inch Nails, and then it was the Wave Goodbye. Wow. Tour. So I think it was, I don't know, it was 18 months all said and done, something like that. That is yeah. a really long time. Yeah, it was super long. Yeah. So you're just in a bus for 18 months, basically. Uh, no, and we had we had breaks here and there, um, you know. And then we'd come back to LA and do rehearsals, uh, and then. But when we were in Europe, it was uh, two months straight. Whoa, mm -hmm. that's quite. That's like um, as you always hear about that, like the musicians on tour and those are like homesick or whatever, like yeah, you know, like because they're just gone for so long. Well, so wait, so you were on tour with Jane's Addiction after that as well? Like they did a Jane's Addiction tour as well. They did a they did a joint um, tour, so it was. Uh, Nine Inch Nails played, okay. and then Jane's Addiction played. Uh, so Nine Inch Nails op like opened, and then yeah, Jane's it was Addiction? yeah, it was a co-headlining thing. So then, um, so Nine Inch Nails would play first, and then Jane's Addiction would play. And what? So what was it like to meet um, Perry Farrell? That's his name, right? Yeah, he's a he's a super nice guy. Is he? Um, I didn't really get to interact Talked with him, him yeah. that much, but you know, like the few times that I actually talked to him, he was like engaged in the conversation and was, like, interested. That's so, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What about Trent? What's he like? He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I didn't spend a whole lot of time with him because, you know, I was you know, in the you crew ever... and whatnot, but, yeah. yeah, I don't have a bad thing to say. That's, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think you would. <laughs> I just, you know, that's, he's obviously, like, um, very creative and stuff, and he's, I've always thought, I've gotten the impression that he's really nice. Yeah, I mean, he's he's super focused, and, you know, just from the experience that, that I had, he's extremely focused and, and really knows what he wants and expects really high quality, you know? That's great. So, which, that's what he deserves. Yeah, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Cool, and you've also worked with other bands like Paramore and, right. like, what, what was it? Um, what was it? So we did Paramore, uh, did a few songs with uh, Tegan and Sarah. This That's is all, right, yeah, Tegan and Sarah. With, uh, Justin. Um, <clears throat> just did the most recent Young the Giant record. Wow. Uh, which I love that record. It's 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 doing really well and it's yeah, it's, it's great. Those guys are really fun to work with. Okay, we'll be right back with the Red Booth. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. So, mm -hmm. so great. So, you, so you've so worked with Paramore, you've worked with Tegan and Sarah, mm -hmm. And Young the Giant. Yeah, yeah, I worked with uh, those guys, and then uh, I did um, the upcoming White Sea album, which I'm really, really excited for that to come out. Uh, it's Morgan Kibbe. Uh, she's you know part of M83. Okay. And uh, her record is unbelievable. It is some of the best writing that I've heard in a long time. It's so freaking good. So that's that's going to be coming up, and I'm actually working with her. Uh, with a band called Wildcat Wildcat. She's producing this band. Uh, we actually start tomorrow. Wow. So, uh, are, what are you doing with, are you producing it too? Or are you doing no, engineering. engineering it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. So do you have your own sort of like studio and stuff that you... I do. I, I primarily work out of uh, Bronson Island, which is uh, a studio that is co-created by myself, um, Danny Masterson, and Jimmy Collins. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so we, we have um, a music show 
out of there called Bronson Island, where we get bands in from around town. And I've heard of Bronson Island before. Yeah, it's, I think it, it's isn't Danny also a DJ? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, DJ Mom Jeans. DJ he's Mom a, Jeans, yeah. right? So he's a DJ, and then he had he had a show on indie um, a while back, and so after that shut down, we like kind of want to do that show again, but let's add video to it. And so it's real super gorilla style. We use these tiny little cameras and. You know, it's not supposed to be HD at all, and so we get this whole band in and do all this stuff, and then we just release a video. That's and awesome. So, and right now we're working on trying to get a platform so we can actually do live streaming for bands. Oh, so wow. A lot of times we'll be, the bands will be in town playing, and we're like, hey, you want to do this thing on Bronson Island? So they'll show up at like 2 in the morning after their gig, and they'll just jam out for ages. Whoa. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm hoping to be able to have bands play on my show too in the future. That'd be fun. I mean, right now we wouldn't fit, but <laughs> <laughs> but I've had a lot of bands on my show too. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, I'll have to check that out. I'll mm -hmm. definitely uh, look out for the live streaming and yeah. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So where should people find you guys? Is that Bronson Island? Yeah, it's uh, BronsonIsland.com, mm -hmm. and then um, I have links on my website, which is MikeShupan.com. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So if a band wants to uh, to hook up and get like help with recording and mixing, producing and stuff, yeah, they can just hit me up from my website. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What um, What are your goals like for? Do you want to get more into producing or? Yeah, I found that I've, I really love producing. Um, it's something that I found that I've actually kind of good at. You know, I, I never I never thought of myself as a producer. I was always the audio geek that likes to tweak the knobs and like, oh, I need the purest sound in the world and all this stuff. And, you know, I just, I, I really started moving towards, you know, producing and it's, it's a, it's a hell of a lot of fun. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so describe the process of producing. Like, what would you say? If you're, you're working on producing uh, an album today. What, what do you do? My goal is to not make it worse, <laughs> basically. Um, it, it really, it, it kind of depends on, on what the band needs, you know, um, Sometimes a band will come and they've got this really, really great song and, um, you know, we have to rework a section of it or something like that. You know, a lot of it, you know, kind of stems, Rework like? Um, maybe rewrite a section of it. Okay. You know, or, or make sure the lyrics are cohesive so, you know, sometimes you'll have a verse and a chorus and, and stuff like that and you get to the third chorus and it doesn't make sense for the rest of the song. You know, there's generally there's a, a message being you know, portrayed and sometimes you know people will just write something to write something and it makes sense but then you know to them which of course is going to make sense to them you know it's it's their art yeah um but the rest of us you know need some more clarification sometimes right mm -hmm. that's cool yeah. so i didn't know you even actually dealt with like the lyrics and the stuff like that sometimes it's like i said it's so like specific for each artist kind of thing depending on each, yeah. each song on its own mm -hmm. yeah. wow okay and then so do you actually sit and work in pro tools and like mix yeah i primarily you know work in pro tools i love mixing um that's that's one of my you know main things that i do also actually um, um this new version of pro tools is is great cool um do you do you, yeah. do you actually put like sound effects changes to the to the music as well? Yeah, I mean, there's um, you know, when mixing a song again, it kind of goes back to that. You know, everything comes down to the message of the song. Mm -hmm. So, to be able to place the instruments in a certain way to create, you know, an emotional effect, and then also portray that that message through. Um, you know, different tones of reverb or delay or even, you know, how much treble and bass is, is in will, you know, really set the mood. So it's kind of... It's making yeah. me want to go make music. Like right yeah, now. It's, <laughs> it's so much fun. I, have, I, I love doing it. I love, I love helping artists, you know, really just get their art out. You know, I think that's, that's probably one reason why I really love mixing and, and the production side of it is because I, I make music all day long but you know I ch generally make the same thing so you know get to work with other artists and experience different genres and, and different what, variety yeah and what they're going through and and being able to just help them so cool. make what they have in their mind a reality 
Yeah. It's like you're enabling them, really, because yeah. a lot of people stop at kind of, I mean, even for me, like, you know, I've written song lyrics, and I've mm -hmm. sort of, like, came up with melodies or whatever, mm -hmm. and, you, and, and if you don't have the the skills to put it actually into a, a song form, mm -hmm. a final, like, deliverable that you can play somewhere, that's right. where I think a lot of people can get stuck. Sure. And, um... But then, you know, obviously you have the bands and you're, you're like, you have bands that have been together for a long time and they, they make their own recordings, but then mm -hmm. it's not quite ready for the radio. Yeah. And, right? you know, honestly, sometimes that's just um, getting a group together to bounce ideas off of. I mean, most of the time when I'm sitting with an artist, they're just talking to me and bouncing ideas off of, of me and stuff like that. And I'm just, I'm just a terminal to listen. And yeah. then they have this epiphany moment. They're like, what do you, you think know? about cowbell right here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always kidding. cowbell, of course. You've got to have more cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, a lot of times my job is to literally just sit there and, and listen to them and, and go, uh-huh. Yeah, that's great. And then they have this huge idea and it just turns into this amazing thing. Wow. That sounds like so much fun, I just have to say. Yeah, it is like, a lot I can't, of fun. I can't imagine doing that, like, just for my job. Like, that's... It must be really cool. Yeah, it's it's definitely, I mean, that's why I do it. I enjoy it. Yeah. How did you first get into doing this in the first place? Like, how, what were you doing? Boy, I haven't really thought about that. Um, like, when you were a kid? Did yeah, you I mean, I started playing guitar when I was, like, six or seven, and then... Um, that's so cute. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Insert picture right here. <laughs> yeah, and then um, I was living in St. Louis uh, with my family, and... You know I have family in St. Louis. Oh, I didn't know that. That's I awesome. do, yes. My, my dad's whole side. And he's also a redhead, by the way. With the uh, best. <laughs> it's like the Italian-Irish. <laughs> like, there's a lot of Irish there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's really cool. Anyway. Yeah, so I, I started playing guitar there, and I got way into blues. There's a big blues scene there. So Yes, um, amazing nights, night, night spots, and mm -hmm. um, wow. Yeah, and then um, when I was like 12 or 13, moved to Nashville. And uh, found out that there's actually even a bigger blues scene in Nashville. It's not just country music. Really? So, <clears throat> and I was super bummed. Like, I had to, you know, break up with my girlfriend. I, you know, was in my first band. I was, I was bummed. And uh, so my parents started taking me to blues champs. Uh, so I started getting to play with these these legends like Chucky Burke, who was, you know, he played with Muddy Waters, and then Wow. Um, Billy Cox, who was. Um, Jimi Hendrix bass player for a while. Are you serious? And, yeah, cool. I did, did some stuff with, with oh him. Oh my god! So like, as a kid, like I have no idea who some of these these people are, and then like I'm just hearing these stories and and uh, really just kind of getting deeper and deeper in the blues. I was just that's that's my huge passion is, is blues music, and um, oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I love it. And then and then I got involved with this um, summer camp there called Kids on Stage, where this guy took a middle school and was failing. He dumped a ton of money into the arts program and uh, turned it from like one of the worst scoring schools in Tennessee into I think it was like the top 10 scoring school. Wow. And they did a summer camp every year. And so I took these summer camp classes of um, rock band songwriting. And then I got hooked up with with um, a group of kids my age who were, you know, talented and stuff, and then, um... So, so you, you were actually, I just, I just realized something, mm -hmm. you, you went to these bars with your parents, you were like, oh, yeah. 11 years old, mm -hmm. and you already knew how to play guitar enough to join people To a playing? degree, yeah. So you just, like, you knew how to play enough chords, basically. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was, you know, it was a lot of... you were of like just, 11 or something? I was 13, 13, 14, something like that. That's yeah. right. That's really cool. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun doing that. I mean, my teachers were super concerned because I'd roll in Thursday, bloodshot eyes, smelling like a bar, and then, you know, like I think one time one of my science teachers called my parents, like, do you know that he's just he's just reeking of smoke on you know every Thursday? And my parents were like, yeah, we go to a bar on Wednesday night so he can play guitar. <laughs> you know, Somebody so. poured some beer on him. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, that was. So, um, yeah, so then I, I, I went to this summer camp and then um, took this songwriting um, seminar thing. Yeah. And where I actually got to 
uh, write songs with like Michael McDonald and um, John Bettis and a couple people and then like got this great relationship with them and you know got to get hooked up with these guys and then you know after the summer camp kind of stayed involved with them you know, we formed this band at the time and then um, my first real recording studio experience was actually at Michael McDonald's studio oh in God. Tennessee where he recorded you know my very first demo it was incredible we recorded to two inch tape you know <laughs> and it was uh, that was the catalyst for me to be like this is what I want to do that's you know, awesome. I'm 15 years old, hanging out in the studio, and I'm like, this is exactly what I want to be doing. And then you started, like, yeah. looking and learning about all the equipment and everything Yeah, and like that. from there, I just, um, I kept finding people to, to hang out with. I got this great internship uh, that was awarded to me by Mackie, uh, which is an audio company. Yeah, I've heard of that, Yeah, actually. it's the, what was it, the Greg Mackie Foundation Music Excellence yeah. uh, Award. Cool. And I was actually the first recipient of that award. Really? And, That's um, cool. And I was awarded an internship with Gary Hedden, who is this amazing mastering engineer in Tennessee. And that's where I learned all of my, you know, audio geekery. That's you know, so through cool. Through him and his son. And, uh, yeah, it was a... I wouldn't change anything about my, my education on it. You know, it's like I wanted to go to school uh, for it. I actually went to MTSU. Uh, with my dad, we we're going to check out the program because they have this huge recording program there. Wow! And um, I was years ahead of everybody because I got to because you had so much experience. Yeah, because I got yeah. so much experience. So I was like, you didn't need to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it still was helpful, but right. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Well, mm -hmm. you're. I mean, you've just been doing it pretty much your whole life, then. Basically, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And did your parents play at all, or? My mom um, dabbles. Uh, she's actually a, a really great fiddle player. Uh, oh. She she plays um, uh, bluegrass music. Cool. A lot of down home stuff. Yeah. You know? And they actually just moved back to St. Louis, so she's like in this huge bluegrass group. And that's so cool. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I I'm just so happy that I got to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm so glad I was able to come and do it. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is really interesting stuff. You know, I I think people need to know more about the whole process and what it's. What it means, not mm -hmm. just all the just the musicians that are like you know public facing and everything. So right, right. there's a, there's so much more to the whole music world, you know. Oh yeah, there's a lot to it. Thanks for watching, Mike Shoepan on the Red Booth. <laughs> <laughs>